Good morning and welcome. I am Eddie Hunter, Chairman of the Roanoke Regional Chambers Board of Directors. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this year's virtual State of the City Address. Today's program is important in supporting the Chamber's why. The Chamber promotes, stimulates, and improves business to improve the community in economy by maximizing the business climate of the current generation as, far as, as well as the future generation. We are proud of our collaborative relationship between the business community and local government, especially during these unprecedented times. We recognize the importance of active engagement with our city leaders in order to support initiatives that foster economic development, address needs within the community, and cultivate strong regional partnerships with our neighboring localities. The growth we experienced in recent years is a testament to the hard work of our elected leaders, our business leaders, civic leaders, neighborhood leaders, and citizens that call the city of Roanoke home. It will take continued commitment to hard work and collaboration to emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic in a position of economic strength, and I am confident that we are all up to this task. I know Mayor Lee will have much to say on the city's recent achievements and the goals for the future. Before diving into the program, I would like to thank the Chamber sponsors that made this morning's event possible. Appalachian Power, Carillion Clinic, City of Roanoke Redevelopment and Housing Authority, Cox, First Citizens Bank, Poe and Cronk Real Estate Group, and RGC Resources. Mayor Lee will formally recognize the Roanoke City Council later in the program, but on behalf of the Chamber, I would like to thank the members of the Council for their service to our city and Virginia's Blue Ridge region. I would also like to thank our region's local, state, and federal elected officials who have joined us today for this presentation. And now, without further ado, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce today's featured speaker, Mayor Sherman Lee. Mayor Lee began his tenure with Roanoke City Council in 2004 and was elected mayor in 2016. He has used his platform to serve as an advocate for domestic violence victims and create opportunities for our youth. In his professional career, Mayor Lee spent 36 years with the Virginia Department of Corrections, assisting people with criminal convictions as they re-entered the community upon release from incarceration. In his retirement, he remains active in this field, serving as a member of the Virginia Parole Board. Mayor Lee takes on an active role in our community, volunteering with numerous civic organizations, serving on local and state board and associations, and organizing the Lee Youth Outdoor Basketball League. Additionally, Mayor Lee was inducted into the Virginia Union University Athletic Hall of Fame last year in September. Join me in welcoming Mayor Sherman Lee. Mayor. Good morning, and thank you so much, Eddie. And welcome everybody to the 2020 State of the Cities Address. It is my privilege to welcome you here this morning. This year has been more challenging than ever before. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues on city council. And let me recognize them uh, right while I'm here. Uh, Councilwoman Trish White Boyd, Councilwoman Anita Price, Councilwoman DeJuna Osborne, Councilwoman Michelle Davis, uh, Council Vice Mayor Joseph Cobbs, and Council Member Bill Bestpitch. I want to thank them again for their hard work to engage with the community and make the tough decision necessary to sustain and guide this city. And I also want to acknowledge uh, our leader, the city manager, Mr. Bob Cowell, for his guidance and direction as we move forward. And of course, I must also thank 
our city employees who have, through difficult times, continue to provide essential services each and every day without interruption and, of course, to each of our businesses who have had to seemingly invent new ways of conducting their business every day as this pandemic continues. In times such as these, it is essential to have a good understanding of what exactly we are trying to accomplish and why, as well as clearly defining how we plan on getting there. The city of Roanoke has a community vision. Roanoke is a safe, caring, and economically vibrant community in which to live, learn, work, play, and prosper. Our city is a vibrant urban center with strong neighborhoods set among the spectacular beauty of Virginia's Blue Ridge. Roanoke's vision focuses on seven areas of strategic importance. Education, community safety, human services, infrastructure, good government, livability, and the economy. We strive for equity, community engagement, and inclusion, healthy outcomes, and creativity. These are components of our strategic plan, and we use them to evaluate every opportunity or challenge that presents itself against this vision and its associated strategies to best determine how to allocate time, money, and other resources. Today, I want to share with you how this plan has benefited the city of Roanoke in what may seem like a lifetime ago, the 2019-2020 fiscal year. It is important to remember where we were this time last year. Roanoke was the first city in the country named an All-American City Hall of Fame winner. We're very proud of that. The Roanoke Innovation Corridor had been established. We were seeing fruits of downtown redevelopment and new projects like the transformation of the Hieronymus Building into a residential and commercial property. Job growth and development continued at a strong pace. We were experiencing record growth for hotel room demand and hotel room revenue. And our tourism was booming with Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge, be a trail setter campaign. That was the largest marketing campaign ever launched for the city and the region. Roanoke was achieving outstanding progress improving early education outcomes through Star City Reads. Plan Roanoke was gaining momentum with surveys and public meetings to provide community input on our 2020-2040 comprehensive plan. City projects like the Melrose Branch Library and Franklin Road Bridge were complete offering expanded and enhanced services to our neighborhoods. Building on the success, fiscal year 20 began with great momentum. Roanoke City Schools announced a partnership with Delta Dental, Korean Clinic, and Freedom First to put a clinic in Fallon Park Elementary to make access to healthcare easier for residents 
in Southeast Roanoke. City projects like the River's Edge redevelopment and Cologne Avenue street improvements were underway. Fire station number seven construction was underway offering a safe, modern facility for our first responders. The city renewed its commitment to decrease gun violence with the Roanoke members event and regular meetings of the task force to reduce gun violence and to identify solutions. Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge made the exciting announcement that Carillion Clinic on Man 70.3, Virginia's Blue Ridge Triathlon was coming to Roanoke in June of 2020. Roanoke Blackburg Regional Airport marked 2019 as its busiest year since 2000. Then, in early 2020, an unprecedented crisis affected our city, our nation, and our world, COVID-19, coronavirus. In March of 2020, the governor announced a state of emergency for Virginia and issued a stay-at-home order. Following this, Roanoke and its neighboring localities declared a state of emergencies. Local businesses closed. Churches closed. Schools closed. The city canceled all non-essential events and closed its facilities to the public. For the next few months, time seemed to stand still. But Roanoke's leadership was not standing still. While continuing to provide most city services during this time, we were busy engaging our citizens and making plans for our response to the crisis. Those plans became known as Roanoke Star City Strong, Response, Recovery, and Resiliency a framework for our reopening support of community recovery and building resiliency. City leaders remain in constant contact with regional partners and state agencies. Regular meetings took place with the leaders of neighboring localities to share information. The city established citizen and staff working groups and an economic advisory panel to meet and assist in recovery efforts. During the stay at home order, members of city council held virtual community conversations to hear from stakeholders in healthcare agencies, businesses, faith-based organizations, hospitality, and nonprofits. These conversations helped us understand what our community saw as obstacles and what they needed to recover from the impact of COVID-19. Roanoke worked with nonprofits like the United Way of Roanoke Valley to meet community needs. Money from their Community Response Fund complemented the work of public health and government efforts by providing funds for needs such as personal protective equipment and supplies and rapid testing kits. Roanoke established a recovery fund to provide financial resources to support the community's recovery from COVID 19 and strengthen its long-term resiliency, the fund drew upon general funds revenue. CDBG, CVESG funds, and CARES Act 
funds. Ultimately, totaling more than $18 million for recovery. Further, council appointed the Star City Strong Recovery Fund Task Force to identify and recommend the best ways to spend these funds, inviting the community to lead our efforts in supporting our recovery, to share up-to-date information with the media and the public about the city's response to the pandemic, the city also held weekly virtual press conferences featuring Vice Mayor Cobb, City Manager Carroll, and myself. And I'm proud to say, by using the tenets of our strategic plan, the city is meeting the challenges presented by COVID-19 with many successful outcomes while continuing to advance on each of our strategic priorities. This year, Royal Oaks Community Safety Achievements include welcoming our new police chief, Sam Romans, to the city, a seven-year low in significant fires within our community, as well as a seven-year low dollar loss associated with fires. The training of 12 fire and EMS staff in advanced medical skills and the use of advanced medications for the most critical patients. As part of the implemented advanced care paramedic program, a new group of middle school students graduating from COPS camp, an annual day camp sponsored by Roanoke Police, helping them learn more about personal safety. 44 students were graduated since the program began. The creation of a rapid engagement of support in the event of trauma coordinator position to organize and recruit volunteers for the reset program, which addresses the needs of the community after traumatic or violent incidents occur. The E911 Center success in fulfilling all requirements to retain its accreditation for law enforcement agencies. We also made strides with their human services. A total of 8,512 citizens who were previously uninsured were enrolled between January 1st, 2019 and June 1st, 2020 into Medicaid expansion and categories covering adults ages 19 to, excuse me, through 64. 67 children were adopted from foster care into their forever families during this physical year, which I'm proud to say, again, leads the state in the most adoptions completed. A total of 30 families were approved to become foster parents during this fiscal year. The largest number of new foster families the department has had in the recorded history. Roanoke well, Public Libraries served 37,491 meals in partnership with Feeding Southwest Virginia through the Feed and Read program in fiscal year 2019, a five-year increase of 800%. Our success is addressing infrastructure was accomplished through Roanoke's 25% energy reduction as part of the U.S. Department of Energy's Better Building Challenge. The city committed 30 buildings of 1.6 million square feet to a 20% energy reduction by 2022. The team exceeded its goal with a 23% energy reduction. Three years 
before the target year, saving the city more than $400,000 last year in energy cost. The Rivers Edge, three million redevelopment, adding two lighted premier athletic fields, a practice athletic field, maintenance facility, paved parking areas, and support amenities for large scale events. The Colonial Avenue street improvements, including three new roundabouts, the completion of 39 stormwater CIP projects, valued in the aggregate of almost 18 million. The city moved forward with this commitment to regional wayfinding, dedicating $150,000 for pedestrian signs in downtown. The city's good government priority was reinforced. The city's action to lower FY21 budget by 1.366 million from the FY20 budget to address anticipated revenue shortfall, shortfalls for the coming physical year caused by the COVID-19 epidemic. The city's support of 24 displaced workers from Norfolk Southern and Freight Car America after those companies relocated. The city's success in sustaining very favorable credit relationships and ratings with all major credit rating agencies. Each physical year, the city, with the help of its financial advisors, reviews the impact of debt decisions to ensure continued compliance with our debt policy limits. In addition, the city also reviews opportunities to refund eligible debt each physical year. And upon the advice of our financial advisors, does so to reduce costs responsibly. Roanoke continued to promote the livability of our community with a successful Go Feast event in October of 2019 with 35,000 attendees. Volunteer hours donated to the city for support of routine maintenance and program facilitation for greenway and trails toppling out at 5,000 hours. The number of inspections of buildings and sites reaching 35,000, ensuring that the environmental protection design and public safety goals of the city were met. More than 35 homes constructed, rehabilitated, or repaired for families in the Melrose Orange neighborhood. Regarding economic development, Roanoke advanced by obtaining $175,000 in grant money to open a financial empowerment center, providing financial counseling for individuals based on their individual needs with no cost to the consumer. In other words, it was free. Funds also were used to hire a financial specialist to coordinate the program making loans and grants available through the COVID-19 relief fund to assist city-based small businesses facing challenges as a result of COVID-19. Loans are available to offset costs associated with employees, rent, leases, and utilities. In partnership with the Economic Development Authority, welcoming APEC Systems, LLC, creating 74 full-time positions in its current downtown office with anticipated average salaries 
of $103,894. Warno continues to be recognized for its outstanding work. Examples this year include the top digital city award from the city, well, I'm sorry, from the Center of Digital Government, the Governor's Technology Award for the Next Generation 9-11 PSAP Project, the GFOA Distinguished Budget Presentation Award, APWA Mid-Atlantic Project of the Year Award for structures less than five million for the Melrose Branch Library Project. The Public Works Service Center being named the 2019 Exemplary Environment Enterprise. Gold recognition in program management and silver recognition in innovation from the National Municipal Stormwater and Green Infrastructure Awards. The Gold Leaf Award from the International Society of Arbor Culture for Parks and Recreation's Arbor Day Celebration. And Roanoke's selection as a finalist for the 2020 All-American City Award. Now, I would do our community a disservice if I did not acknowledge the challenges we face as a result of centuries of racism present in our country and right here in Roanoke. Our city's history includes lynching, redlining, urban renewal, and mountains to hate, I'm sorry, and momentums to hatred. For a number of years, my fellow council members and I have worked to address these. Difficult conversations with the survivors of urban renewal have taken place. Monuments to hope have been installed and vigils have been conducted. Still, we recognize much more is needed and action is required. To that end, our new comprehensive plan, our guide to how our neighborhoods and business districts will change over time, has at its core a call for equity. This means that every transportation decision land use decision, housing decision, made as we go forward as a city, will consider how it helps or hurts those in our community. Before we act, we want to ensure everyone in our city has the opportunity to live in a safe, and vibrant environment and have access to success regardless of their skin color or zip code. Further, earlier this summer, we created an equity and empowerment advisory board which will appoint residents who will assist us in identifying existing policies and practices that either result in inequity or inhibit empowerment and recommend how to rid or overcome these policies. Also on August 17th, we voted to remove the Lee Monument from its place of prominence no longer will the monument honor a history we know to be unworthy of such honor. I acknowledge these represent just the beginning of what is necessary to address racism 
and promote equity. But they are genuine and meaningful actions, not rhetoric. Together, the people in this community will continue to advance on these goals and ensure everyone, and I do say everyone, has the opportunity to, to participate in the success of our great city and experience life here. As mayor, I'm proud of all that has been accomplished over these last several years and of our local government and its can-do, and that's so important, a can-do attitude during this most recent period of crises. The things that I've shared with you demonstrate that Roanoke is not limited by its circumstances but is always looking for rise above situations and do our best for the people who live in our community. Even with all these accomplishments, there is much more to come. As we began fiscal year 21, we will be looking for ways to further our success and address ongoing challenges. I invite you all to work with Roanoke City Council and city leaders to build on the work that has been done and create a strong future. Our community is key to sustaining our momentum as a progressive, successful community, one in which everyone plays a role in making our incredible potential a reality. Thank you so much this morning, and God bless all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Lee. We appreciate your remarks today, and we look forward to working toward continued economic growth in the city of Roanoke. One additional item to note, today's State of the City Address will be replayed on RVTV 3 on Friday, August 28th at 5 p.m. and again at 10 p.m. In addition, it will also be played on Sunday, August 30th, 5 p.m. and then again at 10 p.m. Let me once again thank today's sponsors, Appalachian Power, Carillion Clinic, City of Roanoke, Develop, Redevelopment and Housing Authority, Cox, First Citizens Bank, Poe and Cronk Real Estate Group, and RGC Resources. We couldn't have put together this event without their support. We look forward to seeing a number of you virtually at Coffee and Contacts on September 15th and Women of the Chamber with Speaker Nancy Agee on September 29th. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.